All right, man, here we go. A question about CrossFit and the Globo Gym. Man, to pump or not to pump, Pat? That <laughs> is the question. And just a, a dream combination. So as, Absolutely. as we get so frequently, we get a good question from the community. I believe this was sent in as a direct message to the very not random uh, Instagram. And oh, I always forget before we even start. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. If you'd like to continue, go to verynotrandom.com. Check out all the cool cycles we offer. Get your first kipping, you know, your first strict pull-up, handstand, walk, barbell complexes. And then the other thing I'd love for you to check out, if you own a gym, specifically for gym owners, doesn't have to be a CrossFit gym, any sort of a gym, BTWB now has not only the best workout tracking, which you've already been familiar with, also they have gym management on top of that and billing. So you can get everything you need in one mm. place called the all-in-one. So you can find out more information if you're a gym owner. Get yourself on the wait list. We'll contact you at btwb.com slash all-in-one. Okay. Exciting Here's stuff. Question. Yeah, you know, just, you know, you know I'm so techy. Um, <laughs> this individual says, uh, uh, love your podcast. Learn so much from it. I've been doing CrossFit for six years and started when I was 36 years old. I'm curious your opinion on combining the Globo Gym with CrossFit. It seems to be a trend for elite CrossFitters lately, or maybe just more advertised or visible, to promote isolated exercise movements as part of accessory work or aesthetics, even creating programs targeted at improving aesthetics. I understand that accessory work has always been an aspect of CrossFit, but I'm seeing more elite athletes in Globo Gyms on Instagram often using machines or doing isolated muscle work with dumbbells or other equipment. If an everyday CrossFit athlete added in or switched a couple days a week to a global gym you know, style training, are they cheating on CrossFit? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, it's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first thing that comes to mind to me is just how full circle things have come. Uh, you know, you, you start <laughs> kind of coming out of the late 20th century, let's say, where bodybuilding is all the rage. That's what most people are doing for their quote unquote performance training. CrossFit comes along and says, hey, you know what? Scrap all that. It's mostly a waste of time. Um, you should be focusing on these big bread and butter movements. And those are going to have a lot more bang for your buck. And they're, they're actually going to push the needle forward if you care about performance. And now we're back in this place where it's like, oh, maybe some of that bodybuilding is not so bad, uh, mm -hmm. which I think is very, very interesting. Um, now, whether or not you choose to engage with it, that's that's another story. But I do think it's kind of funny how, um, you know, as CrossFit continues to become more mainstream and, and front of mind for a lot of people, there is a blurring of methodology uh, and, and what was kind of staunchly not something that was mixed in before is now kind of on the table. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting to watch that. That's, and that's what comes to mind first. Yeah, for sure. And a couple of things pop into my mind. First of all, you know, as I've said before, as a staunch advocate of freedom, uh, mm. do whatever you want, brother. You know, you yeah. want to go in it's and hit some, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, you you know, you're not on the couch. You want to go in. You want to do some dumbbell kickbacks. You know, you want to do some concentration curls. You hit the pec deck a little bit, blow the dust off that sucker. You do the inny outy machine. Like whatever you want to do. Mm have a blast um like you know and we'll get into the pros and cons of why you may want to make that decision but but you know do what you want to do i think an interesting thing that jumped out at me is maybe this individual says he's been doing crossfit for six years it's a good chunk of time you know six years mm -hmm. is a really good chunk of time maybe just a little bit bored you know quite frankly and you're either now you're going to dive into kettlebells for a while you're going to you know you've developed a bit of a passion you're that one one million crosser that developed a bit of a passion for long distance running you're going to go down that <laughs> road for a bit you know um strict pull-ups your thing or you're like you know what beach season's kind of kind of want to fill the sleeves a little bit you know i'm going to hit some curls you know like i'm going to get after it like that's okay like if it breaks mm -hmm. up the monotony if it keeps you moving if it keeps you walking into the gym you sprinkle some of those bodybuilding style isolation things in there in addition to what you're doing it's not the end of the world by a long shot so that, that that's my mm. my quick little foundation before we get into other things to lay the decision but one thing i would like to say just as a uh historian if you will which is this the one part in there which is probably interesting depending upon when you got into crossfit this individual's been doing it for the last six years which is all you know 
relatively recent, let's say it's 2018, 2019, started to get into it, that it, based upon what he says, following it on Instagram, do these lead athletes, hey, you know, I know that accessory work has always been a part of CrossFit. So just, just so the work, just so everyone knows, that's not true. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. the opposite is 100% true. It was by design to this day, in my mind, it still is a minimalist approach to strength and conditioning, a minimalist approach to fitness, you know, anything which you could carve away with a scalpel, which wasn't 100% necessary and had a big bang for your buck and a ton of transference. We said, we're not going to spend our time doing that. And so accessory work um, quite deliberately was not. And then it started to creep in little bit by little bit and little bit. But I'm going to say, you know, with the competitive side of the house of people doing more and hitting some extra sessions in and whatnot. And, and now, depending upon when you get into cross, it may seem like that's always been a thing, but it hasn't. Yeah, I agree. I, I'll offer just a little bit of nuance there too, where I think if there was accessory work, it was really disguised as other things. It was skill practice for something specific. It was, okay, we're going to hit this workout really hard. And then we're going to spend some time in static positions working your gymnastics. Or it's, hey, we're going to hit this back squat and then we're going to do, uh, you know, back extensions to failure, something right. like that, where it was still pretty core movements, just done a little bit after the fact. And so the the range that you saw did not come anywhere close to like bodybuilding style <laughs> exercises in terms of selection or volume. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a very different approach. So. Even, even if you could categorize things like that as quote unquote accessory, I don't think most people would recognize it as such when they're thinking about like what that looks like today. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting, but I think you nailed it. I think you hit the, the bullseye with the, Hey, you've got some training years under your belt. Now you're coming along. That's a long time to stay dedicated to anything, which is awesome. Yeah. So com commendable. Um, and you know, I think that everybody given enough of a time frame, is going to have ebbs and flows of motivation, ebbs and flows of interest. And you're going to, at some point, at least most of us, find something that you need to land on for a little bit that keeps you more motivated, like you said. Uh, said another way, there's very few of us that continue to just plug along and just do the, the workout as it's written and never question that and never push a little deeper right. and never think, what if, or maybe I should add, or maybe I should take away. That, that's almost nobody. And that's great. I mean, it's good that people get invested enough mentally to start tinkering and start thinking about things. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I do think, however, that people, um, for whatever reason, when they do go on these little offshoots, be it a little bit of bodybuilding on the side, or I want to be a weightlifter, or I want to be a track star, whatever, uh, it's easy to start convincing yourself that because you are doing it and it is motivating to you, that it is now, therefore, the best thing for you to be doing if I'm looking objectively at my fitness. And that's right. not necessarily the case. I also think it doesn't matter because for most of us, we're not paying the bills by how absolutely objectively fit we are. We are doing this because we think it's valuable to our life. We think we, we see the long-term utility of it. Uh, it's, it's great for your mental space. Whatever it is that keeps you coming through the door Mm -hmm. that's the most important thing to preserve. And whether or not you are truly as objectively fit as you could be, yes, it's important, but it's not that important, if you know what I mean. So uh, I think in this case, particularly with the bodybuilding, great, if you enjoy it and you find benefit from it in, in terms of you know motivation, interest, renewed passion for training, all these types of things, mission accomplished, you know, great, mm -hmm. have at it. But you don't feel the need, uh, or you shouldn't feel the need to try to convince yourself that that is now a superior way to train just because it's of interest to you currently. I guess that's the trap. Yeah, and just like I said, want versus need, right? Do what you want. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. also do whichever one Agreed. you want. Do, you, can do, you can do whichever one you want with your eyes wide open, make a fact-based decision that moves in the opposite direction of fitness and still make that Absolutely. choice. You know, which is... And, and, and still it, love it and and still benefit, love it right you know? i mean yeah. um and so it just depends on also everyone watching this or listening to this show i want to assume that you adhere to a definition of fitness either that is crossfit or is very similar where it's the generalist mm -hmm. we're good at all different kinds of things we don't just lift we don't just run we don't just do calisthenics we're greedy and so if you do have that definition then you realize 
that you know a pursuit of largely isolation non power producing low load lower intensity movements is is not going to rapidly move the needle towards fitness and that doesn't mean that it's wrong it just means have your eyes wide open make those decisions and and chase them again with all the knowledge there and then also what i would say is you know want versus need so if if instagram God bless Instagram. If if that has infiltrated your mind to think that <laughs> these jacked, yoked, absolutely top tier animals in the CrossFit space with rippling pectorals and horseshoe triceps and Dan Bailey like <laughs> shoulders and you know a lat spread that blocks out the sun and abs that you can just do your laundry on, et cetera, et cetera, that they achieved that physique because of the accessory work that you see them doing on Instagram, I think you have been woefully misinformed by the wonderful algorithm. That's not, and, and truth be told, genetics also plays a very large role as well. I mean, most of my life, pre all of my life pre cross it was exactly what now is, you know, kind of coming back into vogue in this question, bodybuilding style workouts, mm -hmm. three sets of 10 flat bench, incline bench, decline bench, pec deck, dumbbell pullover, cable crossover, like, and then 17 different ones for triceps, 17, like it just, that's what it was, like all from Tom yeah. Platts and it was Mike Menser and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and like, that's exactly what that world is and eating enough protein and then separating my cardio from that and doing some abs and, um, you know, not to let the cat out of the bag, nobody confused me for a professional bodybuilder like i just didn't have the genetics to be just a yoked jacked individual like you know a lot of like a lot of there is a, a genetic component to that so even if you start to pursue a bunch of sets of 8 to 12 reps of hypertrophy based movements i maybe you you might look a bit different but it you it might be a whole lot of work for not the payoff that you thought and again if there's joy there great but just you know bear in mind that that your nutrition you know all that's mm -hmm. going to play a really big role and not just those isolation movements if you're chasing a certain type of aesthetic. Yep, man. If only there were Instagram back in the day, Pat, you could have been an influencer. That would have been your calling. <laughs> you know how much time I spent on the, on the calf machine and developed zero calves in, in any way, shape, or form? Like, we just got some genetics going on here. You just needed one more set, bro. One that's more set, man. One, one more set. set. But, <laughs> well... <clears throat> I have a list in front of me here that I kind of scribbled down uh, in preparation for this show. And I tried to take an approach uh, to give the devil its due, so to speak. Um, sure. So I started thinking about, okay, let's look at motivation aside or interest aside. Why might you choose to do some bodybuilding style training um, with kind of the more, I don't know, emotion taken out of it, uh, so to speak. And the things that I kept coming back to, um, you know, bodybuilding training, by and large, I think people, they kind of get into it for a couple different reasons. Number one, because they don't know much about training, and that's just kind of what people are doing. So that's what they jump into. Um, but even people that have some, some knowledge uh, and choose to stick with it, I think there's a couple of, you know, really good outcomes from, from potentially adding some in. Mm -hmm. The first is that, uh, you know, the style of training that's usually associated with bodybuilding, you know, sets and reps, like we'll call it that, um, you're going to flush a lot of blood to the trained area. And with a ton of blood flow comes a lot of nutrients that can be really helpful for all sorts of things uh, from, you know, helping to resolve minor injuries to keeping that area healthy and strengthening it in a way that it's more resilient in the future. You know, that's kind of the best take on, on that style of training. Um, I think secondarily, what people hope it does is allow them to strengthen a weak link in a way mm -hmm. that will then have an impact on a more complete movement later. And I'll say that there's kind of limited utility there. I think sometimes if you really at a point that you're very, very developed, meaning you are at a high level with some of these lifts already, and you can identify something as a weak link and, and eliminate it via some sort of isolation training, you might be able to eke out a little bit more performance that way. But most people, I think, are better served from attacking those big compound lifts with more attention, with more focus, uh, for a lot longer time, uh, and really push those to a level where they start to stall out 
and you need some other methods to continue to drive their progress. So don't be premature with that. Um, I'll also say that, you know, when it comes to getting stronger, there's kind of two big things at play here. Obviously, number one, there's a mechanical aspect to how many motor units the muscle has. So those are the different bundles of cells that contract to make the muscle shorter and therefore move your bones. Obviously, if you have a small number of those, there's just not that many to contract and the contraction itself will not be that strong. That's, that's just a fact. <clears throat> However, on the other end of that, when you think about getting stronger is the neurological component, which is how many of those motor units that you have can you contract consciously at, during a given effort. And that is how one continues to get stronger while remaining at the same weight. And that's why somebody like myself, yourself, who have relatively static weights and have for a long time, can continue to, to get stronger without necessarily gaining more motor units. We are simply getting better at contracting more of them during any given effort. And bodybuilding won't necessarily help with that. So you do have to understand that there's more to getting strong than just having a big muscle. It does mm -hmm. not guarantee that you'll be able to contract a high percentage of those motor units just because you have a lot of them. Okay, So you have a bigger pool, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that that pool can be used for that task. So you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons there. Um, but again, to summarize, I, I do think that there can be some utility to flushing a given area with blood. That can be really beneficial for a number of reasons. I do think that at least in the logic of it, it's not a bad idea necessarily. If you think you're under muscle to maybe try to gain some muscle, that's fine. Sure. But I will say that I think there are more efficient ways to go about that, namely by driving the big compounds longer and really focusing on those for a long time. So that's my two cents as far as like, why would you do it? Yeah, I was going to say, again, to echo what I just said before, like, I'm a big proponent of do whatever the heck you want to do. Yeah. Um, and if you Same. are going to get more into the isolation stuff, great. Uh, I would say if I if I could just have a request to the individual individual doing it because I care, continue to squat, and continue to deadlift, you know, continue to power yep. clean, you know, something like that would be just a, a wonderful, a wonderful addition to that. And and don't it would make you know, again, do whatever you want to do, but it would make me sad if the back squat got hung up and then it became mm -hmm. the leg extension and the leg curl and things like that. I'd be like, oh man, you know, that's that's you know, you you're probably going to get I know that you're going to get stronger, fitter, faster, and put on some great muscle mass, you know, doing some good back squats at the appropriate in intensity, the appropriate loading and all that mm. stuff. You know, the other thing I was going to say, and this is, I have absolutely no basis or data for this, which is always one of my, you know, greatest things to say. <laughs> and, so, and I don't know if this is this individual's case at all, if after six years, uh, looking to do more some isolation movements as well. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, you get a good session in the gym. I did that for a long time in my life. You know, you get a good pump going, you get a good a good soreness or whatnot. Um, but it's not a soreness like a bottom to bottom to bottom squat. I mean, that's a unique sure. thing in and of itself, right? That I don't know if this individual could be doing a wonderful program. I've got no idea what they're following. Or I know that there are people out there because I hear from them that are doing something which is just, it's too much. It's beating them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and doing something, you know, bodybuilding style stuff will most likely be a lower intensity or a lower stress to your body than somebody who had who isn't following something that's ideal and they just feel like a truck hit them every day of their life and they're sore head to toe if that's what you got going on you work a couple of days of lower intensity bodybuilding style training into your sessions and the other days are crossfit i bet you'll have actually a really good outcome you know if instead of you smashing yourself six days a week you're doing three CrossFit and three Globo Gym, you, you'll probably feel better. So I don't know if that's what this guy has going on, but I would say that is something just to keep in the back of your mind as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I used to give some lectures and people would ask about bodybuilding style training, isolation movements, you know, one of my go-to answers was, you know, do whatever you want. But then the second one was, if something was to, to get a nod as to like, hey, that's a good idea, it would be hopefully, I think you mentioned it previously, because you had some inkling that I am still chasing fitness. I do still have the definition where I'll kind of talk about a fitness. And I think this particular isolation movement will help one of my functional movements. Like maybe mm -hmm. you got really, you really weak overhead and you're going to do some things that you think will help your overhead stability and whatnot that 
maybe you wouldn't put into a, a workout, but you're going to hit a little bit of extra shoulders and military press a couple times a week. Like, I think that's fantastic. That's great. But a lot of those things, uh, when I think of if an athlete did have some sort of a deficiency somewhere, I can also think of like a really good functional movement that would treat it really well. You know, hit the triceps, you know, I'd be doing weighted dips. You know, it'd be a great thing to do. You know, if I, if I want to work the biceps because the summer's coming, personally, I'm going to do a whole bunch more chin-ups as compared to just, you know, hammer curls or something like that mm -hmm. or, or et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, there are, there's always a functional analog most of the time to whatever potential things that you're chasing with the isolation movement. And it just, again, it's just an informed decision, lay it all out, clearly identify what your goals are, understand what compound major lifts that are high power producing do for you, understand what these isolation movements do for you, and then, you know, make the best decision for you. But a short answer to your question, my friend, is no, you're not cheating on CrossFit. You're not. <laughs> yeah. you're, that, I mean, that's literally, I should have answered that initially. You're not cheating on CrossFit. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you are on your fitness journey and your fitness journey doesn't have to look like anybody else's. And so, and you're free to drift into something, you know, headlong and it's your all encompassing mm -hmm. a session for 90 days. Then you lose interest and you do something else and you wander back and maybe actually through all that experimentation, you'll either find your little hybrid or you'll actually learn, you know what? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I really love the bodybuilding stuff. That's going to become most sure. of what I do. Or you know what? Mm. It was great for a while. It was a nice diversion. I was maniacally bored. I can't, I'm back in on CrossFit. Like that's all, that's all okay. It's all part of the process. Yeah, no, I agree with everything you just said there. And uh, it, I think even if it was, quote unquote, cheating on CrossFit, who, who cares? I mean, who, <laughs> right. yes, yes, that, if, yes. If you, That's if a better you way don't to say care, it. There is the no cheating on CrossFit. Right. If you, the individual, don't care, <laughs> then it doesn't matter. But uh, I, I also was really glad that you brought up this idea of, hey, you know, bodybuilding comparatively is lower intensity. Now, that doesn't mean that bodybuilders work at a low intensity. I mean, there are many, many examples. We've of, all of seen the Ronnie just, Coleman yeah, videos. Absolutely. The, the like, man's not working yeah. at low intensity. You know, you go, you go look at Dorian Yates in his prime. That guy is outworking Correct. everybody in the gym. You know, like it's, it's yep. a, I get it. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, the average bodybuilding session from the average gym goer, and it sounds like what this in, individual is talking about, comparatively, it's going to be a lower intensity than a CrossFit session that's just the way it is mm -hmm. um you, when you look at exercise selection um you know right down to it you're going to be way more intense during a crossfit session um that said i think that the dance of crossfit when you get into it if for the long term is finding that sweet spot where you are intense enough often enough that you're driving the progress that you want without feeling like you just cannot get out of bed every other day because you are falling off the cliff with that intensity. And that mm -hmm. is going to be a moving target. You're going to have it for a while. You're going to go too far. You're going to back off and you're not going to do enough. And you're going to find that sweet spot that works for you most of the time. But as life develops and as your life changes due to increased responsibility, whatever it might be, that's going to move a little bit and you're going to have to reevaluate. That's part of it. That's just, that's a given and it's going to happen to every single person that engages with this long term. So I thought it was really interesting when you said this idea that, hey, you know, I had a couple of bodybuilding sessions and despite the fact that it looks like I'm quote doing more on net, what I'm actually doing is lowering my intensity to something that I can recover from mm -hmm. a little bit better. And so it's interesting the situation like that, I think it'd be easy to look at it and say like, oh, this bodybuilding is driving my progress. It's like, well, yes, but not in the way that you think. Mm -hmm. It's entirely possible it's driving progress because you are taking your foot off the gas a little bit and allowing yourself to recover. So I think what's also important to, important to point out in this situation is that there's kind of two things going on. CrossFit can be hard to recover from a more kind of holistic nervous system perspective. The volume mechanically may not be high in, in many instances, yeah. but it still can be difficult to recover from because the intensity, relatively speaking, is so high. It's impactful. Yes. On the other hand, if you look at something like a moderate bodybuilding program, the intensity might be lower, but there is a mechanical stress that you're probably experiencing at a pretty high volume. And that can be good or bad. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people, that can be exactly what the doctor ordered. Like I said before, you know, kind of flushing the area with blood, you know, getting some kind of rejuvenating um, benefits from that. 
But on the other hand, it can also be detrimental if you are just mechanically stressing an area to the point that it's like, okay, you need right. to rest that too. There, there's a right. recovery element that you have to consider. So anyway, my, my broader point is that, uh, you know, yeah, I think sometimes dropping the intensity, like we talk about, can be a really good thing. What you do to achieve that drop in intensity, mm. it's an interesting question. It could be nothing, mm -hmm. but it could also be, hey, man, I have a couple things that I go to the gym, I keep the habit, but they keep me away from the flame, so to speak. Right. I don't, yep. It doesn't, yep. it allows me to engage with an activity without having to go off the deep end. And maybe that's enough. So, yeah, I mean, the, the the short answer also is yesterday's workout i held my hand close to the flame and i didn't intend to but that's just how it went it, it yeah the story wrote itself and then today uh, i'm not going to hold my hand close to the flame at all i'm going to have a conversational yep. pace going on and that's just a little dance that keeps me you know not burning out yep so well i've got one last closing thought yeah. if you'll if you'll no, have go, me please uh and my last closing thought on all of this is that i think each individual the big dance is trying to find that sweet spot with intensity. And then the second big dance that you're always going to be running is just time. You only have so much time to train. And that's true for all of us. And <clears throat> so you have to look at the calculus of what am I spending the majority of my time doing? And is it worth that time? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the biggest crux when you start asking yourself, should I engage with some bodybuilding stuff or not? Well, how much time do you have to train? Do you have enough time as it is and you just want to branch out and put some extra things on the books? Hey, great. Do you not have enough time and you're scrambling to get in the things that you think are important already? Well, maybe it's not worth it at this stage to try to dump some of those already critical things that are having a hard time finding their way into the program for some sets and reps. So that's got to be a consideration when you're thinking about it. Um, you know, hey, you've only got so much time. What is going to be the most valuable use of that time when you're in the gym? And can you afford it, so to speak, when it comes down to it? 100%. And it was, you know, not a tangent, but that, that put it into my head is everything just takes, like you said, time. It's, it's a commodity, it's a resource. It's, you know, one side across it might be, like we said before, it's a minimalist strength and conditioning. And most of the time that I spent as a younger man in the gym bodybuilding, was not a minimalist approach. I mean, it was, <laughs> you know, it was, you know, yeah. four different things for each muscle group, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember, well, you let know, me last stop here week, there. Could, could you conceive, like put yourself back in young Pat's mind. If somebody said, Hey Pat, you can get a complete workout top to like tip to tail, 25 minutes out the door. Would you believe that? No, I, I mean, without a doubt. No, because I remember the first time that somebody showed me the CrossFit website, it, it was in uh, August, 2005 and the workout of the day happened i think it was august 2005 but the work of the day happened to be seven sets of one deadlift mm -hmm. that was it that was all it said and i remember being on the phone with the person said i don't think i'm on the right website because this is it's just it says the number one seven times for a deadlift <laughs> and they're like no, no no that's that's it that's the site that's it and it's like so you pick something up seven times and like yeah i'm like and that's the whole workout like yeah i'm like this is the stupidest thing i've ever seen in my life do you know i'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna fall don't out of shape immediately <laughs> don't you know how fit i am and uh yeah i just i just didn't know what i didn't know but what that reminded me of is you know, the time you spend in the gym at, for different programs for different goals mm -hmm. different phases of your life it was last week when we interviewed chad vaughn do you remember there was that one session that he said he was in some cross gym lifting for two and a half hours? Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, a two and a half hour session, you know, but that was, you know, that program, that protocol, the rest periods and all that, you know, a whole lot of stuff going on. And just what do you have in your life? Do you have those goals in two yeah. and a half hours? Do you have different goals in 45 minutes? Do you have somewhere in the mm -hmm. middle? Like it's just none of it's right or wrong. It's what's your goals and what are the resources that you have? And you make the decision that you know works best for you so yeah good stuff well hopefully hopefully we helped out with that question that you are not cheating on crossfit <laughs> yeah so that's it in recap and summary love the topics as always this is more everybody else's show it's not my show or adrian's show so keep sending the topics if you have something on your mind go to the btwb youtube channel find this episode post your question in the comments or post your thoughts about this particular topic, go to the very not random Instagram account, send a direct message there if you want to have an idea as well. Um, 
and then go to verynotrandom.com, check out our cycles, go to btwb.com slash all in one for gym owners, workout tracking, gym management, and billing. Thanks everybody. For Adrian Bosman, I'm Pat Sherwood, and we will see you next time.